There we go. What's going on, y'all? It's your buddy Kurt at Calm Down Warning at Existential Romeo. Sorry if I'm a little loud. Um, and let feel free to let me know if I am loud. I apologize. Happy Infinity War Day, right? It's finally here. I, I'm one of those weird people where like I don't necessarily get like extremely excited um like until about like five minutes before I'm about to see the thing that I've been waiting to see. That's when I like really get stoked. But um I'm ready. I'm more ready than I've ever been to go and see this movie. So today I wanted to um just share a couple things with you. Um, um something that I've noticed is people ha have uh have only been, excuse me. I've only kind of partially been talking about how significant the relationship is between Gamora um, and Thanos and Gamora Nebula and Thanos. A lot of us know the role that Nebula, Nebula played in the Infinity Gauntlet comic book. And if we're not familiar with that, I don't want to say too many things at this point, because if you hadn't read it by now, what I might say could potentially be a spoiler. I have not seen the movie. We are not going to spoil the movie in any way. Anything that I say is totally speculation because I haven't seen it. But... Um, what I have seen um, from the trailers and what we've all seen from the trailers um, is that Gamora is kind of the one to fill any everybody in on Thanos that isn't familiar with him. Basically, everybody that's not the Guardians and everybody that's not Thor, because I got a feeling even Thor has kind of heard of him being the son of Odin and knowing about Surtur and all these other types of kind of more cosmic or mythological creatures within the MCU. But today we're going to focus on not even so much Nebula and Thanos, but primarily um, uh, Gamora and Thanos. Um, we're going to watch two clips, and then I'm going to read a comic, um, which you can read it along with me if you haven't already. It's Infinity, um, Warlock and the Infinity Gauntlet, number nine. This take um, this is a tie-in that was taking place in the Infinity War comic, which whatever happened in the Infinity War comic pretty much will not have anything to do uh, with the movie. They just took the name. But there is a very important piece that kind of shows the um, the relationship that Thanos and Gamora had and why. And we will talk talk about Nebula a little bit. She does play in. She's going to be in, in the video that we'll watch. So we're going to get ready to watch the video now. And then we'll watch the second video. And then after that, we will... Uh, um, we'll read that book together. So if you want to find it while the video's on, again, it's Warlock and the Infinity Watch 9. You can also wait. I'll give you some time after we watch the videos to try to find it because we'll kind of discuss the videos um, just a little bit. So everybody um, who's here with us for the first time, thanks for joining us with the Capus Crusaders. We have a weekly comic book um, podcast where we talk about comics. We are sponsored by um, Computer Booter, um, great um, electronics repair shop and gaming lounge. They also have VR and retro games. So everything that's current, some VR stuff and some retro gaming. And um, they are in the Sacramento area over in Carmichael. So definitely check them out there. Um, if you drop our name, you might get a little discount. But their contact information was at the beginning of the video. So run it back if you need something repaired or you want a cool place to meet some people and play games. They even have tournaments. And also, um, as you can see down, oh, hold on, wait, in the corner over there, Computer Booter. Um, wait, Computer Booter's below. And then MX, uh, 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 excuse me, Empire Comics Vault um, is our, our local comic book store. where We go, we buy our comics, we hang out, um, and we record there sometimes. Um, so check out both of those places. They support us. We fully support them and we want you guys to support them as well. So we can keep our nerd co culture and comic book, um, communities nice and strong and internet is great because we get to connect, but we have to meet in person too. Like the movie theaters, where we get to co all come together and watch it. So let's keep our communal places strong and support them on that note. I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to jump over. We're going to watch the video clips together. We're going to discuss them, and then we're quickly going to read through Warlock and the Infinity Watch, issue number nine, and take a closer look and examine Thanos and Gamora's uh, relationship. And if we end up having a little bit more time, um, a little later in the day, I might come back on and we can read um, uh, the Thanos Annual number one, which also has a story in there about Gamora and Thanos' relationship. So in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and um, kind of come, come over, over here. here. And we're going to check, check the video, video out. out. Go. Go.
Those, Those clips, clips from, from um, Guardians, Guardians in the, in the Galaxy, Galaxy Volume, Volume 2. 2. Shout out, Shout out to Anderson, Anderson in the in chat. chat. Man, man, the KK Crusaders. That man. man. Sister, sister or, or brother, brother. You, can you can probably, probably relate, relate to this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my, my brother, brother get into, into it all the time. time. I win. I win. I bested you in combat. No. I saved your life. Well, you were stupid enough to let me live. You let me live. I don't need you always trying to beat me. I'm not the one that just flew across the universe just because I wanted to win. Do not tell me what I want. I don't need to tell you what you want. It's obvious. You were the one who wanted to win, and I just wanted a sister. You were all I had. But you were the one who needed to win. Then I was pulled my eye from my head. And my brain from my skull. And my arm from my body. Because of you. <sighs> so that was one of them. Um, obviously that one was a little bit more, um, them. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but you kind of see what their relationship is like and you get to see, um, and hear them reference, you know, some of the things that Thanos had done to them and why. And, um, 
you know, Nebula saying, really, I just wanted a sister throughout all this stuff. Like we were already going through the worst thing in the world, you know, while you were, you know, trying to impress him really basically to keep him off your butt. All I wanted was for you to notice me, you know, and 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 acknowledge me and, and help me through, you know, because he favored you and that put me in a spot. Um, and that was a lesson for Gamora. Um, now we're going to go right back down. And this it, clip is a little different, but still, you know, kind of justice telling. Um, and it alludes to what uh, what being a daughter of Thanos might be like. So here we go. Well, uh, here it is. It's the best ship we got. Location of Ego's planted in the nav. We'll wire you the 10% once we've paid. What are you going to do with your share? As a child, my father would have Gamora and me battle one another in training. Every time my sister prevailed, my father would replace a piece of me with machinery, claiming he wanted me to be her equal. But she won. Again and again and again, never once refraining. So after I murder my sister, I will bow warship with every conceivable instrument of death. I will hunt my father like a dog and I will tear him apart slowly, piece by piece, until he knows some semblance of the profound and unceasing pain I know every single day. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about like a pretty necklace or a nice hat, you know. So James, James Gunn's brother. brother. Ooh, that's nice. Anyways, happy trails. <laughs> All, All right. right. I think, I think this is, yeah, yeah, Sean, Sean Gunn. Gunn. That's, that's right. right. Um, um, his uh, brother. brother. Anywho, so we can see Nebula, she's out to get him. Like, she's had enough, she's done. Thanos is going down and, you know, that's an interesting, that's an interesting notion. I'm going to reserve some of the things I was going to say about that. Drop my phone. Excuse me. But from there, we're going to roll over into um, the comment that I was talking about. Now, for someone who's so terrible you heard what Nebula said that Thanos would do to them. And he was doing it to both of them. He wasn't just doing it to Nebula, but he favored Gamora. So she didn't have it as bad, but she still had it really bad. Um, but why was it that such a terrible monster that would do something like I have two daughters, like <laughs> far be it from me to ever, ever do anything close to what Thanos did to his kids, to mine and any of you out there as well who have kids. So with a, such a terrible father, that would obviously cause daddy issues, <laughs> both of them. Why would Gamora at all want to try to, now we, I did say, keeping him off of her butt, but it has to go deeper than that. She really, 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 really wanted to impress Thanos. Why would she want to give so much to someone that seems like gives them nothing but pain? And angst. We're going to find out why. So. Again, Infinity, uh, excuse me, Warlock in the Infinity Watch. We are looking at. Um, we're looking into uh, issue number nine. So issue number nine, Warlock in the Infinity Watch. Go down. Let's go take a look at it real quick. So. Here we are now. I will give some context to this right now. We're in the heat of the Infinity War. Again, not going to be a, a big part of the movie that we're going to go see tonight. Something totally different. And at this point, um, Adam Warlock, who is an essential character, but not in our universe yet, though some of you have heard of him. Um, he um, and during Infinity Gauntlet, he had ex um, expelled both his full evil and full good side out of his body in order to be 
a being that makes decisions solely based off of what's in the best interest at the time, not emotional at all. Um, and within that, he had uh, the, his bad side, which was called the Magus, um, was the one that ran amok and created this whole thing that's going on in the Infinity War. Well, it got so bad that Thanos had to team up with the good guys and even Galactus at this point is teaming up with the good guys because that's how bad the Magus is. Some of the worst villains, Galactus and Thanos, are teaming up with the good guys. And in the midst of that, Galactus says, um, Gamora is part of the Infinity Watch. As some of you may or may not know, Gamora was originally created by Jim Starlin, who is the same person that has created um, uh, Thanos and Drax. And Gamora was created to be the protector and kind of um, the aid of Adam Warlock, more so the protector. And um, when Adam Warlock had to give up the Infinity Stones, he um, he couldn't keep them all to himself anymore. He, had, he gave one to Gamora. And um, Gamora was part of what is known as the Infinity Watch, along with Drax. Drax got an Infinity Stone, a person named Moon Dragon, who's a telepathic and is always in a very skimpy bikini because that's all that women wore back then <laughs> when, when men drew them was nothing. Um, well, not all of them, but most of them. most were drawn that way. But um, Moon Dragon, if you see a bald headed lady that basically looks like Amber Rose with a cape and a green um, Borat bikini or Bruno bikini, I remember it's Bruno, oh, Borat bikini, that's Moon Dragon. She's important, just not to the MCU yet. And then um, a few other people got it, Pip the Troll, and um, I won't say who got the last stone, but Adam Warlock got to keep one, and he had to give one away to another person. I won't say who. Um, hopefully by now you found uh, issue number nine, Warlock and the Infinity Gauntlet, and we'll begin to read it here in just a second. But all that to say, um, Galactus has um, chosen Gamora to come and aid him and going and talking to the embodiment of eternity. Probably see him in here. And um, basically has to go inside of him to find um, something that will aid them in overthrowing um, the Magus. But basically, she's also trying to correct what's going on. Excuse me, I got some of my what's going on with eternity. So eternity can vote to allow the infinity gauntlet to be used again so they can destroy the Magus. Whew. All that to say, that, so with all that, that's very, I know, it can be convoluted if you weren't keeping up, and that's fine. You read a comic, and it, it's broken down simply in one issue, but when you explain it all together, it's like, that's a bunch of mumbo-jumbo. The writing in it and what happens with the characters is the most important thing. The galaxy and all that stuff is just plot devices. So here is Gamora, and this is the story. This is a tie-in. They didn't show this part in the regular uh, issues. The tie-in showing how she helped Galactus go inside of Eternity and um, bring Eternity back into a um, non-catatonic state so he can help make a ruling. And within her journey into Eternity, inside the personification of Eternity, she reflects on a time back where she first came in contact with Thanos. You're ready for this one. So again, written by Jim Starlin, um, pencils by Tom Rainey, and whatnot. So here we are, Thanos in the midst of some of our favorite um, comic book characters. And uh, and there goes Gamora right there next to him, right in front of Adam Warlock, the guy in the red. We're going to continue to go. Oh, and there goes Moon Dragon. Moon Dragon is right. She's a... Uh, She's that one who's right there. Whoops. Right. There we go. Right there next to Wolverine. So. Sorry, I got a text message. Um, all right. So the Magus and the um the massive power uh he yields threaten the entire universe. I, Galactus, petition you, the Living Tribunal, to rescind your edict which limits the joint use of the Infinity Gems. 
Though this plea may be the only means to stave off the Magus's mad ambitions, I cannot grant it. Because of rulings beyond my control, the only entity that may lift the, these restrictions is eternity. So eternity himself, the living embodiment of eternity. But eternity has already fallen victim to the Magus and stands before us in a catatonic state. Then you must independently find a way to free him from this condition. This situation could be avoided, Gamora. Uh, I would, I, um, if this situation could be avoided, Gamora, I would do so. What are you talking about? I shall be the surgeon, you the scalpel. What are you doing? Bam, so there goes Galactus zapping her. That's the living tribunal back there behind Galactus. You'll learn more about that later. There goes eternity, the, the personification of eternity in a catatonic state. Oh, man, I'll let you guys take a... Excuse me for just a second. Just got to make a slight adjustment to what we got going on. Okay, cool. We're good. All right. As you feasted your eyes on that lovely, lovely panel, we move on to the next one. A bonding. Go forth, woman warrior. This day, you are a healer. Your, um, your patient, all reality. So that's pretty dope. I love that panel. That's pretty dope. The pain of the mind is worse than the pain of the body. Publius Cyrus. Now, one of the things Jim Starlin is known for is always taking quotes, some sort of poetic or profound quote, and putting it in. Um, and I, I love majority of them. And then that's also uh, Gamora's skull right there that she's known for inside of the comic books. It's on either side of her shoulders. So she has been hoist into eternity. Old wounds. Here we go. Daddy, daughter, issues. So, against my own volition, I fling myself into the cosmos that is eternity. A puppet on a string is all I am. My spirit rebels against this indignity. Galactus, curse you. Set me free. This story, um, which takes place between issues number four and five of the inter uh, of the in uh, if Infinity War, is brought to you by Jim Starlin, Angel Medina, um, Robert Alman, Ian Laughlin, Janice Chang, Craig Anderson, and Tom DeFalco as editor in chief. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be flipping kind of back and forth, so hopefully you guys are reading along. Uh, to do what would mean, uh, to do that would mean your death. Go back, yep. So, to do that would mean your death. Only with our essence bonded, thus can you hope to survive in this hostile environment. So that's um, Galactus talking to her like, I, I can't set you free. If I cut you free now, you, you'd be dead and we'd all, we wouldn't have a chance. We need We need you to do this, so... X, Y, Z, eternity can make a ruling. Linked in this manner, I can use you as a conduit um, for my vast might. That's Galactus talking to Gamora. Gamora says, what purpose does this base manipulation serve? Galactus says, through you, I shall retrieve eternity from the realm of Catatonia. Only within his being can such surgery be performed. Then why didn't you just jump in here yourself? Is what Gamora asked. And then Galactus says, this course of action holds hidden perils for even one such as I. So instead of, um, and then Gamora says, so instead of you sending, uh, so instead of you sending a surrogate uh, to be killed in your place. Oh, so instead you send a surrogate to be killed in your place. A cowardly plan, proud Galactus. So that's why Galactus didn't just do it himself. Just in case something happens to him, he's no longer able to be affected. So in this case, he is literally, you know, ob objectified Gamora. Gamora is just a means to an end. She doesn't care about her. Throws her in there. She de dies. Oh well, you know. It's one of the many peons we have in this war. It's one of the many soldiers in this war, and it's a sad reality of war. People actually have to think like that during war. Or don't have to, but find themselves doing so as a means of strategizing. It's terrible. It's terrible reality. Terrible burden. 
Um, a judicious course of action. I am Galactus, an intrinsic factor within the universe. That's that's Galactus's answer to her calling him a coward. While you are a mere mortal who would not be greatly missed if anything should go awry. And, uh, um, and then Gamora says precisely, you know, she knows. Astral cannon fodder and a war between godlike beings. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah, I mean, she knows the Galactus turning, you know, she's such a, yeah, I mean, she's insignificant, you know, is how, you know, they're viewing, they're viewing her. Okay, I got the picture. I'm a redundant component, a pawn to be sacrificed. I've been here before. I can handle it. This gal's a tough, this gal's as tough as they come. She knows how to take a shot. And the lady can give as well as receive. That's the way it's always been. Thanos used me long before I, I ever heard of the devourer of worlds. Of course, then it was different. I was young and didn't know any better. Plus, Galactus doesn't give a rat's butt about me. While Thanos probably did not care a whit either, despite the fact he saved my life and raised me. Not just raised her, but saved her life. But, there, that, but it gets even deeper than that. He had his reasons. I'm sure all of them selfish. Pretty obvious from the start, he was preparing me to be his own personal astral samurai. By the time I was 15, I could take out a combat droid without working up a sweat. That's her and Thanos in the background, of course. Still, there were times when I felt there was more to it than just that. I know, probably only fooling myself. Still remember the time when he came into the spaceport at Tartunla number seven. No way I'll ever forget that day. I'm just going to keep it all with the comic book up here. And I apologize, I'm a little pressed for time because I got started late, so... This might get cut short, but I'm going to get you through. And I'll be back in a little bit, and we can have a discussion for uh, about the rest of the things I wanted to talk about. Maybe read that annual, Thanos annual one. Thanos had private business to attend to there. Something about this cube he, um, he was hunting for, Cosmic Cube. And that goes back to before the Infinity Gauntlet. Thanos got the Cosmic Cube before he got the Infinity Gauntlet, and that was the first time he died and met death. He ordered me to stay within the ship um, because uh, Tartunla number seven was no place for a young lady to wander around alone. I meant to obey Thanos' orders. I really did. But the thing was that the ship was well guarded, even without me being there. I was having difficulty with, emerg uh, with emerging into womanhood, and it had been six months since I'd seen planet side so she's coming into her own she's young she's a teenager it sounds like she's you know her body's starting to develop she's coming into womanhood all of the biological as well as the psychological um you know things and experiences that come along with that it was the first time i ever crossed thanos grievous air i figured the big the uh, i figured the big guy had trained me to fight like a dog warrior what better place to test those skills than in a hole like this but kicking, um, but kicking tail was the furthest thing from the mind once I hit those streets. There's nothing like an intergalactic port. I was spellbound by the exotic mix of people and tongues. And back then, I was still young enough to be dazzled by fine silks and baubles. I never hope that I pronounced it right. The girl dived into the irresistible pleasures of the ap that um, the afternoon afforded. And never since the wolves lurking in the shadows. Of course, Thanos being such a powerful being and caused so much destruction, not only is he feared around the universe, but also hated and hunted. Oh, yep. There we go. I was. Huh? What's that? A blockade constructed from the solidified sound. Meant to keep out any would-be rescuers. How do we get in? Sorry, I asked. <laughs> Bam. Shot right through it. 
And I like that. Jim Starlin, sometimes what he does is he'll um, take a break, even though there could be some crazy large cosmic stuff going on. And he'll take a break to focus on a little detail right, real quick and then get right back to something. And it's just a nice little, you know, it's just a nice little thing he does. Tools should never be, uh, tools should never question the craftsman. Tools should only obey. I didn't know that the day I headed back to the ship and figured foolishly, um, and foolishly wandered down the wrong back alley. If I'd been paying attention, I would have sensed them and avoided the whole situation. Go, so her fighting off Thanos' enemies. But my head was full of girlish fantasies and not on hard reality. Long hours of training kicked in and I was able to at least take a few of them down before the weight of sheer numbers overwhelmed me. But even then, I had no idea how bad my circumstances were. I hoped Bravado would win. I, ho I, I hoped v Bravado would win out where skill failed. You lugheads have no idea who you're messing with, do you? Why don't you tell us, girl? Ooh. I'm the ward of Thanos of Titan. Let me loose. You're making a big mistake. Terrible. This, this is what I'm talking I'll be dipped if you ain't scaring me to death, cutie. I, I, I'm nothing, hear me? Less than nothing. Common, common thing predators like to do. Predators like to get their prey and not only physically show them, the, you know, that they dominate them, but also mentally and psychologically beat them down. And those sometimes end up being the old wounds that don't heal or only partially heal. Sometimes fully heal is possible. Takes a lot of hard work. Here's this guy playing around with this tool, which is really, you know, um, another way, a very artistic way of, you know, saying he's playing with his other tool. <sighs> and she screams, no, 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 no. Abu uh, abuse is never imagined. An offense to both the flesh and the spirit. Yeah, again, deep wounds. Deep, deep, deep. Galactus, what have we here? Eternity's core essence. The dark mystic bands are what keep eternity catatonic. So finally they've got to the thing that is actually screwing with eternity, not allowing them to be responsive. Um, they appear to be breaking up. I'd say eternity's already busting free without our help. as would be expected, but we dare not wait for the inevitable triumph. I, sen uh, triumph. I sense every moment is precious in this endeavor we are about. We must free eternity now. It came back to me slowly and quite painfully. There was no way to avoid it, except perhaps through death, but I wasn't quite ready for that. As close as Thanos is to death, uh, not his daughter. Didn't need, the, uh, didn't need the out. My prince finally arrived to save the day. She called Thanos. She called Thanos a prince. Again, this is the way she views him based off of what he did for her. She called Thanos a prince. And we have to admit, it's not a great person. But if we're going act for act, this was a good act. Lass, why didn't you heed my warning? Now look at you. Such a foolish child. And, and even it's almost like a backhanded compliment, but face it, like, you know, he's using, like, in his twisted way, the, this is endearing. I'm going to quickly finish up. I'll be out, and then I'll be back shortly, guys. So he goes Thanos, and he had wiped out all those dudes. He murked them all, and she's just busted. She's just Poor Gamora, you didn't realize what a harsh universe awaited you outside the hull of Sanctuary 2. I promise I am partially to blame. I have tried to protect you against it, girl. Should have realized I cannot always be by your side. You'd eventually step out on your own and stumble. Sorry, Thanos. 
The comforting ebb and warmth surrounded me for a long time after that. The brutal realities that confronted me whenever I ventured from its tender embrace always drove me back. Horrific images that still haunt my dreams. Broken bits of me being discarded. Now, this is the part about, you know, them being, you know, uh, manufactured, you know, added parts and upgraded in order to kick more butt. Shiny new replacement parts being inserted. I had no say in the matter of the new and improved me. Finally, the day came when Thanos suggested the dosage of my painkillers and I was thrust back into the light. There was no more escaping the consequences of my actions. No more loving oblivion. Saved as much as you as I could, Gamora. That street gang didn't leave a great deal of a salvageable nature. You now have a nearly complete new skeletal form, a special night, uh, lightweight alloy, nearly indestructible, plus total respiratory replacement and reflex enhancement. You've become quite a nasty bit of work, if I do say so myself. I'm not quite human anymore, am I, Master? No, does it really matter? I guess not. Now you're better than human, child. Scars will eventually fade. Completely? Not that it really makes any difference. None of the past or anything else really matters, does it? I mean, that what did being human ever actually get me? It only gave me the pain of watching my family and all my kind die at the hands of the Badoons. Merely gave me long hours of loneliness and tears. No more tears. I rerouted those ducks. I'm better off like this. You've learnt a valuable lesson this day, lass. Proud of you. Now rest. I would, I would only after a long, sleepless night of, real, of unrealized tears, as the ship's artificial dawn greeted me, I made a vow. I swore I would never again allow anyone to use or abuse me. A promise I kept until now, till I became Galactus's puppet savior. His good intentions matter not to me. The current state of affairs is still a bitter pull to, pill to swallow. I find no solace in, ever, in even rescuing eternity. Within to my utter shock, I discover that that is not that it is not a soul entity. Galactus and I revive. Ooh, that's great art. I love it. Eternity and affinity. Infinity. With eternity, that's infinity. Of course, woman, they are not but different sides of the same coin. That's why Quasar couldn't locate her. I never realized. An understandable condition, after all, you are but mortal. Together, so beautiful. So much in the cosmos I'll never grasp. So much. But none of that means anything right now. Galactus, you've had your way with me. Now I demand that. What? The woman warrior has succeeded in her quest. Blast you, Galactus. You used me. As I would anyone in order to save my reality. Someday I'll make you pay for this humiliation. I swear I will. Your bru bruised ego is of no import at the moment. Eternity, can you hear me? Dismissed. No longer a concern to gods. Time marches on and one must garner whatever solace possible. My sacrifice may well help save the universe from the Magus's vile insanity. Someone please explain to me why I feel so dirty and rumpled. What do I do now? That's a simple one to answer. I go on. I simply put it, put it behind me. Like I always do. The only option left open to me. Save self-destruction. Though sometimes the latter seems a tempting offer. Because Thanos was wrong about the scars fading. Always be with me. The old wounds. Some old wounds. Quite heal. Some old wounds. Never quite heal. That's it, my friends. 
So again, you know, just how it captured, you know, what a victim goes through, very similar to how he captured, um, you know, the death of Captain Marvel and the stages of going through death and accepting death and what it all looked like. Um, Jim Starlin's an incredible writer. Um, the stages of grief, acceptance, um, you know, wanting to defend herself, how she felt after it was all done, just being used and let go, all captured so beautifully. I hope that comic helped anybody that had gone through anything similar at the time. Now we really see, we have a more accurate view, a more expanded view of Gamora and Thanos, Nebula and Thanos, father-daughter relationship and how significant it is. And tonight we'll find out that much more about it and what the MCU has to say about it and how they've how they've reformed it. But until then, my name is Curtis at Calm Down Warning at Existential Romeo. Thank you to Computer Booter. Thank you for Empire's Comics Vault. Thanks for everybody who joined. Feel free to run it back and watch the episode again and uh, just take it in one more time before we go see this Infinity War. Take care of yourselves. And I think I'll be back in a little bit.